So this quick look is gonna be a twofer. I'm gonna show you guys the Octagon Kentucky Banjo or Kentucky Octagon Banjo or whatever else I call it. Um, but I've shown this before. This is the one that I actually build for an online class. If you're interested, there's a trailer and links below somewhere. Uh, but this has been one of my favorite fretless banjos to play. Uh, it's very simple construction. Um, and I want to go through a little bit of design stuff that I did with this that was a little different than historical representations of this banjo. Um, but also show you two of them. So this one is the one that I made with super limited tools. It was made with basically five tools. A hand drill, a file, a hand saw, a coping saw, and a reamer. I think that's it. Um, if you don't count sandpaper, I use some sandpaper. Um, so anyhow, that's how this one was made, just with no electricity, all by hand. Um, and it's really, really simple construction. It's basically a three layer cake for the outside, right? The skin is scratched across the top and then this little piece here is tacked to cover that. Um, the back is open. It has a one piece neck. Ambrosia maple is this one uh, with cherry pegs, right? Uh, nothing too complex. Just got brass screws down the bottom here and a goat skin head. It's got a holly nut and a holly bridge. Um, or no, sorry. Yeah, holly nut and holly bridge. And uh, we'll give you a sound sample of this one in a second to compare it to one that I made, the same exact thing, same measurements, same everything, except I used a few more tools and made it a little fancier. So. Uh, this is the exact same thing, except it is a Wenge fingerboard uh, instead of just a solid uh, maple one. It is a cherry neck instead of a maple. And you can see the finish on this one. I made it a little higher polish, right? Um, I made everything just a little bit more extra. Uh, I'll show you some details up here in a second, but it's got a Wenge little line on the middle. It's a laminate neck. Uh, it has ebony pegs instead of the cherry. And um, there's one thing inside of it that's different, and that's that I put a tone ring in it. So uh, for those that know, you can skip the next 30 seconds, 20 seconds, but a tone ring is what interacts with the skin to the sound. So you imagine when you pluck a string, the vibration goes through the bridge, across this head, over a tone ring, and that's what echoes. Uh, in this case, there's no tone ring. It's just straight onto the wood. Okay, so it's vibrating off the wood and in that cavity. This one has a brass ring inside of it that actually the, the tone goes over, the skin goes over. So when you pluck a string, that vibration goes down through the bridge, across the skin, over the tone ring, and then echoes out. In this case, a lot of times if I did a tone ring, I would put it on what are called posts, little metal rods that stick up. Um, I put this one on ball bearings, and so I'll show you here uh, in there, and I'll show you some um, glamour shots at the end here of it. But we'll show you up close real fast. You can see in there. See, I can move my light. Inside there, you can see those little ball bearings that are holding up that brass ring that's touching the, the skin. So here's the back. Whoops, hit the light. Here's the back. Here you can see that wenge piece that's actually made up in the middle of the neck. And there's that wenge fingerboard. I think that stuff is just beautiful. Really interesting stuff. You can see it. And I just have it highly polished. There's really nothing on there in terms of finish. Um, the cherry obviously has finish on it because it'll be interacting with your hands and everything else. I have some little wenge stripes down here in the sides as well. It has a maple ring. Right, to capture the, the skin. Now, like I said, I want to talk about a little bit of design stuff real fast. Uh, for those that have had this video course, you'll actually see me kind of designing this as I go and what I do. And one of the two features that I, I really found uh, pivotal in the design of this is where the neck interacts with the octagon here. And so if you notice, it has a flat bottom, right, which it stands up on its own flat sides and traditionally if you ever see one of these from Clifton Hicks or someone else uh, he's got some great examples of ones he's made um, it's got a flat bar right here right it's flat across the top where the neck goes um, I was going to actually scoop mine 
to match this little scoop right up here. So I thought design-wise it'd be nice to have this echo down here. And when I started making it, I didn't like it at all, and so I ended up flattening it out, and this I really enjoy. It's a nice transition area that, that makes it softer, more mature looking. Now, on the back also I have this heavy chamfer on here. And in the class, as I'm making this one for you that take the class, I talk about designing this and how I laid this out and why. Uh, but one of the reasons basically was I didn't want a basic circle, I wanted something different and more unique. Uh, and this is what I kind of came up with. And it fits in there nicely, and I don't know exactly why. Um, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to play a little bit on one of these, and, uh, and we'll get a sound sample. And I'll play a little bit on this one, get a sound sample, uh, so you can hear the difference. And so the only real difference, I mean, you can tell the difference in wood, so it's got a maple instead of a, uh, or a cherry instead of a maple neck. And, uh, but the tone ring really makes it a lot louder, a lot crisper. And so uh, we'll play some of this, and then I'll get some glamour shots, and you can hear some recorded sound over it. So let's do that. All right, so first up is the maple neck. Uh, you guys can hear how this one sounds. No tone ring, right? So uh, let's think of what to play. Let's do Angel on the Beggar. We'll play the same song, same tune, on this one. So that one has the brass tone ring, uh, has a little more amplification. Now to amplify that even further, if I play this one with a metal uh, finger pick, whatever you want to call them, this is a brass one that I made that I really enjoy. This one gets really loud. Play the same song. So anyways, we'll look at some pictures, uh, we'll play some legitimate audio there, uh, a little better than this camera. So, hope you all enjoyed, and we'll see you on the next one.